Level 4, Key Stage 3 exam questions. Off we go with Session 8. Here we've got two ways to change degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. There's an exact rule and an approximate rule. So the exact rule one possibly would use a calculator, whereas the approximate rule we could do that on our heads. That's the idea of an approximate rule. Right, find 25 degrees Celsius centigrade or Celsius. That means using the exact rule and do the same for the approximate rule. So let's look at the exact rule first. So we're going to take the 25 and we're going to multiply it by 1.8 and then we're going to add 32. Now I'll put a bracket round there because that means we have to do that bit first. 25 multiplied by 1.8 equals, that comes to 45. Now we're add on the 32 and we'll use the calculator all the way for that one I think. And we get the answer of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's do the approximate rule. So we're going to take the same 25 degrees Celsius centigrade, double it, which means multiply by 2, doesn't it? And then add 30. So as I say, the idea of an approximate rule is it's easy to do in your head, or relatively easy. So 225 is 50, and 50 add 30 is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can see, the two answers are not terribly off. So if you only want an approximate value, then that's a pretty good rule. Now it says find 0 degrees Celsius using the exact rule, and 0 degree Celsius. I keep saying Celsius because that's what I was taught, but it's centigrade or Celsius using the approximate rule. So, the exact rule is to multiply by 1.8 and then add 32. Don't need a calculator for this, do we? 0 times anything is 0, add 32. Which is in fact true. That's freezing point of water, and that's freezing point of water on the two different scales. Now the approximate rule, so we double the naught and then add 30. So if you double naught you get naught, and if you add the 30 you'll get 30. So that's converting centigrade to Fahrenheit using the rules. In fact, this question does continue with the part C. So we've still got the two rules there. Show that 10 degrees centigrade, the exact rule and the approximate rule will give the same answers. So show it. So let's do it. Exact rule. So let's take the 10 degrees and multiply it by 1.8 and then add 32. Still don't need a calculator for this because we should be able to multiply by 10. When you multiply by 10 and there's a decimal point, you move the point one place so it ends up as 18. Now let's add those two together and get 50. Now let's look at the approximate rule. So we're going to take the 10 degrees centigrade. We're going to double it, which means multiply it by 2, and then we're going to add 30. So 10 twos are 20, 20 add 30 is 50. So that actually does show that 10 degrees centigrade gives 50 degrees Fahrenheit using either rule. The club is to take 3,000 people on a journey to London. That's a lot of people. Each coach can carry 52 people. How many coaches are needed? I don't know why I put two question marks there. I must have had an itchy finger on the question mark key. Really it's saying how many 52s are there in 3,000? Which is that. 
Now if this was a calculator paper, let's see what would happen, shall we? 3000 divided by 52. And we get this in the calculator window, which in this particular question is actually a nonsense answer. It's saying that we need 57 and a bit of a coach. Well, you can't do that, can you? You can't order a bit of a coach. So you have to round it up and say 58 coaches altogether. Now that's with a calculator. I'm sure that would be a calculator question to see if you appreciate the necessary rounding up to make this sensible answer. Each coach costs £420. What is the total cost? Now, most probably, if that was calculated later, so would this be. But let's practice our multiplication without a calculator. 58 coaches, each costing £4.20, means multiply. So, let's forget the 5, and multiply each of the numbers on top by the 8. 8 noughts, 8 twos is 16, carry the 1. 8 twos is 32 and 1 makes 33. Now we multiply by the 5. But because it's in the tens column, we put a naught down first. And then multiply each of the numbers on top by the 5. So 5 noughts, a naught. 5 twos are 10, carry the 1. 5 fours is 20 and that makes 21. And then add up the two rows. We need to make sure we don't forget how to do this multiplication. And lastly, let's not forget to put a pound sign. That's 24,000 pounds. Quite a large club. Going to London in 58 coaches. Could they get 58 coaches? Well, that's not my problem, is it? Lastly, it says how much is each person's share of the cost if they share it equally? So it's 24,000, what was it? 24,360 is the total amount for the coaches shared by the 3,000 people going. Two, four, three, six, zero oh, divided by 3,000. Again, appreciating that the answer is money, therefore let's not forget the pound sign. Write one number at each of equation to make it correct. So this is an equation, anything with an equal sign is an equation. So I've got to write one number there that makes the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So let's start off by adding these two together. 4 and 6 is 10, carry the 1. I don't usually do that sort of thing in my head. I usually write them down, but that one's easy enough, isn't it? So 16 adds something is 60. So we need to do 60, take away 16, which I suppose we could have done in our heads, but let's play safe. Now let's work out this one. On this left hand side of the equation we've got 400 plus 150 which is 550. I think I can do that one in my head. 500 plus 50. No messing on that one. 4 add 6 is the same as... 6 add 4. 4 add 6 is the same as 4 add 6. I think I must have typed something silly there because that's a bit silly. But Never mind, that's what it says. 37 take away 20. We're going to do that in our heads. I tell you the truth, if it's an exam, I'd still write it down. Just to make sure I'm being safe. So what do I need to take off 27? I think I'll do that in my head. 27 take away 10 is 17.